The following video will look at how to plan a data flow diagram and specifically by looking at either a HSC question or a question that may be an assessment. What we're going to be looking to identify in the question are the external entities, the processes, data flows and data stores. And this will be our guideline then for actually diagrammically representing our data flow diagram. So we're going to look at a scenario related to the transaction processing systems and one that specifically focuses on FPOS. So an FPOS system has been installed in a new business in order to directly debit transactions from a customer bank account. The system works by a customer presenting either a credit or debit card and inserting it into the FPOS terminal and entering a PIN. Or they may also scan the card using NFC technology, which does not require a PIN to be entered. The transaction is processed with funds being transferred from the customer's bank account. Approval is sent from the bank and the transaction is stored in the business database, a receipt is printed for the customer. So we're going to firstly break down the elements. So the elements we're going to look for in this question are the external entities, the processes and the data stores. So firstly for the external entities, what we can identify is there is a customer and there is the bank. Okay, there are two main external entities in this actual scenario. And then we'll go through what processes are occurring for this transaction to take place. So firstly, they present their credit or debit card into the terminal. If they do this, they have to enter a PIN or they may also choose to use the NFC option if their card allows them to do so. But if we do choose that option, we need to remember that it does not require a PIN to be entered. The next step then is processing that transaction. After that, approval is then sent back saying that the transaction has occurred and then the customer is going to receive a receipt. So there are all the processes that we've been able to identify specifically from the question. The last thing we need to know is, is there a data store in here? And yes, there is a database on site. And this is obviously where the transaction would be recorded. Okay, so here are all the elements we need to know for our actual data flow diagram. So let's start putting it together now. So once again, we'll start off with our external entities. We've got our customer and we've got our bank. So what I've done is spread these two apart because obviously they're both going to be accessing the system at different times. We'll next start putting on our processes. So we're inserting the card into the terminal. We're entering a pin. We're using NFC as an option. The transaction gets processed. Approval is sent. A receipt is printed. Okay, so all our processes are now on the actual page. The last thing I need to put on is our data store. And there it is. Okay, our business database. And I've obviously put that in a location near the transaction being approved because I've got a good idea that's where it's going to be. So you really do need to be a bit methodical in where you put your circles because now we've got obviously put in our flow lines. Okay, and it's got to make logical sense. So the first step is basically... The card is presented and the ID number is getting recorded from the card. Okay, that can go either through the card being inserted or through the NFC option. With the card being inserted in the terminal option, the next step is to enter the PIN. But that actual option is not necessary if you use the NFC um, way of doing it. So after this step, whether you've gone NFC or whether you've gone card, they're both going to be now transaction um, processing that transaction. So the transaction amount is sent for the transaction to be processed. From the transaction being processed, the bank will be communicated with and the actual amount will be requested from the bank. The transaction will be approved and the funds will be transferred. Once the funds have been transferred and it's all been approved, the business database will make a record of, record of the payment. Then it will send approval. Okay, And once a confirmation has been made, the customer will get a receipt printed. So that's a bit of an outline of how you could approach this question. Now, is this concrete the only way you could do this data flow diagram? No, there's other elements you could look at. There's other ways it can be written. But all this stuff has been brought straight from the question. And I think that's what you need to remember when doing a data flow diagram. All the data that you present in your diagram has to be pulled straight from the question. There are a number of other factors that were not in the question that could be mentioned, such as what happens when the actual um, process has been declined or the card is not working. Okay, but that wasn't said in the question. 
Okay, so try to keep your diagram specific to what the question is asking of you. By listing what your external entities are, your processes are, and your data stores is a great starting point. And then you add in your flow lines after and fill in the gaps with what data you think is being passed around between each of those processes. So I hope this all gives you a good idea of how to do a data flow diagram.